Hello, Richard here and welcome to Train Driver Vlog number six. And today in this video, I would like to talk about something that happened to me about four years ago. I got caught speeding, but train drivers never speed, do they? Stay tuned to find out more. So welcome back to another train driver vlog with me Richard Evans right here on Dad Rail. I'm going to talk about the train driver speeding issue in just a minute but just before I get into that I'd like to say a huge huge thank you. I'm now over 400 subscribers which is absolutely amazing so thank you everybody for your continued support for sharing these videos, subscribing, it's really really appreciated. And I'd like to give a uh, very special shout out to Jack Newell and his fiance Donna for all the support and wonderful comments you've been leaving me and uh, don't forget to check out Jack's channel especially Travel Jack's Journeys videos which are absolutely brilliant and I shall leave a link in the description below to his channel. So now we've reached 400 subscribers, I think it's about time I answered a question that I've been asked loads of times before, but never given an answer to, and that is Dad Rail. Why would you call your channel Dad Rail? Well, here goes. When I first started the YouTube channel and named it Dad Rail, the plan was never to upload um, train spotting videos, railway vlogs and videos like that. I was just about to start on a project with my dad and my three sons to build a 24 foot double O gauge model railway layout. And the plan was that we were going to work together on the layout and by sharing the work that we'd done on YouTube, we were going to hopefully inspire an, uh, the next generation to get into the hobby. Hence my channel slogan, Create, Share and Inspire. Unfortunately, that plan is still very, very much on the drawing board. I will get around to it eventually, but uh, it is still on the drawing board for the time being. But after uploading my first ever video on the channel, Brighton Model World, link in the description below, I kind of got, got the... Fit, the uh, the want to make more videos. I kind of got the bug to make more videos. So I decided to use the channel for other content, hence the vlogs and the train spotting videos now. I do take um, a great deal of pride when I make videos and it's something I really enjoy doing. And I like to try and give all my videos um, a certain production value and certain level of professionalism and hopefully that rubs off in the content that I'm making. So there we go, a brief history of Dad Rail and why the channel's called Dad Rail. 400 subscribers is absolutely amazing. My target for the year was 250, so thank you everybody for your continued support. Now, on to the next section of our video, and this is something I'm going to start putting in these vlogs from now on. Can you tell me what this symbol here means? This symbol here is on a signal post at Hastings Railway Station. A little bit of a competition, a little bit of a game. Can you tell me what it means? I'll give you the answer in the next vlog, but if you think you know, put your answers in the comment section below. And don't forget to check my social media as well, because I'm going to be posting a few things like that on there also. So on to the train driver section of the video at long last. And train drivers never speed. Or do they? About four years ago, I was reported by a passenger who was using an app on their smartphone. They used social media to report that I was doing 103 miles an hour in a 100 mile an hour zone. Consequence for me as a train driver, next time I booked on for duty, I was called into my manager's office for a little chat. Now fortunately for me, the train I was driving was fitted with uh, OTDRs, on-train data recorder, similar to an aircraft black box. In fact, I think all trains in the UK have to be fitted with um, OTDR systems now, I think it's mandatory. And on examining the data, it was discovered that I was doing 99.3 miles an hour, not 103 as the passengers report, reported, which was great for me, no consequences, no actions against me. But it got me thinking, I think there's a huge, huge public perception that train drivers speed to make up time when we're running late or just speed in general. And I can absolutely categorically tell you that is simply not true. Train drivers do not speed. Sure, there may be times when the speedo creeps up a little bit over the speed limit, but this has to be corrected pretty quickly. But the idea of deliberately speeding to make up time simply isn't true. As I understand it, it used to be common practice once upon a time to go a little bit faster and try and get some time back. But in this day and age, it simply doesn't happen. As I said earlier, all the trains I drive certainly, and I think all the trains in the UK are fitted with uh, OTDR on-train data recorders. And as train drivers, we are subject to random downloads uh, of the uh, data recorders as part of the ongoing competence process. And if you were randomly downloaded and it had been discovered that you were speeding, you'd be in quite a lot of trouble. You'd potentially be out of a job. As well as this, there are safety systems in place that will stop a train if it's going too fast, if it's speeding, such as TPWS. If you go over a TPWS grid too fast, then the emergency brakes will come on. 
These do get set off actually more often than you'd expect, but it's more to do with braking curve than the driver actually speeding. But I'll talk about that a bit more in another video because there's, there's quite a lot to that, believe it or not. In some cases, especially on more modern trains, if you exceed the maximum unit speed, they'll actually send a notification straight to the control centre. So before you even get back to the depot, your driver manager knows you've been speeding. So for any train driver that truly values their job, speeding just isn't an option anymore. But there are many reasons why you might think a train speeding, why you might perceive the train as speeding. And I want to talk about some of those now in this vlog. So the first one is the weather and lighting conditions. A train traveling along a track at 75 miles an hour in the wind and the rain on a dark winter's night will be perceived to be going a lot faster than the same train traveling along the same section of track at 70 miles an hour, 75 miles an hour on a bright sunny day. It's just the way things work. When you're driving a train, you have to do so many night hours during your training because your perception of speed in the dark is just so much different to what it is during the daylight. The track is also another big factor. If you're traveling at 80 miles an hour over a smooth section of track, great, perfect. But if the track's not in such good condition and it's a bit bumpy, as quite a few of the lines are these days, then that same 80 miles an hour can seem a lot faster. It can seem like you're actually going too fast for the section of track. I had an incident, um, or I witnessed an incident about a month ago, actually, where a member of the public got off of a train and was raging at the platform staff that they wanted the driver's name because he'd been speeding. But I know for a fact, the section of track that that train had just come over is really, really bumpy. And the train was running non-stop over that line, which doesn't usually happen. So the train would have been traveling a lot faster than usual. Although, still within the speed limit, it would have been a lot faster than usual on a bumpy track. So the passenger would have perceived that as the driver speeding. Hard braking or aggressive driving. As train drivers and as a train driver, I strive to give my passengers the smoothest possible ride that I can. And under normal circumstances, when I approach a station, I'll shut off the power before the station, coast gently in, then make a gentle brake application to bring the train to a stand. But if you're running a few minutes late, one of the ways you can make up time is you can come into stations faster and brake harder. You still do it safely within the safe operating capabilities of the train, but to passengers that are used to coming to stations slowly and stopping gently, this can be perceived once again that the driver was speeding. One of the other ways as a train driver you can make up time if you're running late is to drive to the speed limits. As drivers we have to have a very intimate knowledge of the routes that we run over. You have to know the speed limits, the gradients, as well as signal station positions, names of lots of different things. It's absolutely crazy what you have to know. But in many cases we don't actually drive to the speed limit. I'll give you one example. Um, if you leave Orpington heading towards London Bridge, the speed limit leaving Orpington is 90 miles an hour. It then drops to 70 all the way to a place called Hiver Green, just past Grove Park Depot. Now, if you leave Orpington, you can accelerate to 70 miles an hour, but you'll be constantly putting the brake on because it's downhill all the way to Hiver Green. So you'll be 70 miles an hour, the speed will creep up, you'll brake, you'll brake, you'll brake. Now, what myself and most drivers will do is accelerate to 55 miles an hour, and then you shut off the power and the train will coast all the way to Hiver Green without exceeding the 70 mile an hour limit. But if you're running late, you can accelerate to 70 and keep it there. Again, because you're then going faster than usual, that can be perceived that the driver might have been speeding. There's absolutely loads of examples of this sticking with the same route there. You come out of Seven Oaks Tunnel, the speed limit is 100 miles an hour down to Tunbridge. But by the time you've accelerated to 100, it's pretty much time to put the brakes on again, so it's quite a pointless move. So most drivers will come out of Seven Oaks Tunnel doing about 80 miles an hour, and they'll maintain 80 miles an hour. They'll just shut off and coast all the way down to Tunbridge. But if you're running late, absolutely nothing to stop you pulling open the, the accelerator, pulling open the power lever, accelerating to 100 miles an hour, and going down to Tunbridge there. But again, because you're traveling faster than what you're used to, it can be perceived that you're speeding. Anyways, I think I have talked for more than enough in this vlog already. Don't forget to tell me what you think this symbol up here means. Leave your answers in the comment section below. And also don't forget to check out my social media pages. I'm going to be putting more content, um, railway signs and symbols on the social media page, which should be down the bottom somewhere there now. Just like to thank you all for watching. Like to thank you for your continued support. I can't say it again, 400 subscribers is absolutely amazing and if you haven't already then do please hit that like button and subscribe to dad ralph for more mainline heritage european and model railway content thank you for watching guys and remember create share and inspire